Kelsey from Paper Rock Geo Studio and I have another fun gel printing, mono printing video for you today. This one isn't part of the challenge that I was completing. This is something that I wanted to do myself. I had been making some vegetables, cutting up some celery and the bottom of the celery inspired me to make this video and you'll see the bottom of the celery in this video eventually. Um, I think I start out with the citrus fruits, but basically I just really think that sh that fruit and vegetables have interesting shapes. So anything that has an interesting shape, I think you should use on your gel plate because why not? You can make fun prints with it. These are very simple prints. I didn't do a bunch of layered colors or anything. They're just, just showing you the idea of what you could do with some of the things that are in your fridge. Um, actually this large citrus fruit is a grapefruit and I got that off my mom's tree in her backyard and then the other one is a um, what are they called cuties it's a little tangerine that that I buy bags of them because they're so sweet and cute so I decided to try out some dilution paints again today I do have trouble with dilutions paints on my plate in my climate because they dry too quickly. So I started out putting some slow drying solution on the plate with the paint to try to combat that, but I just don't like that stuff. It's sticky. <laughs> it makes the paint sticky. So um, I just decided to continue on without it <clears throat> for my next prints. Um, you know, I love the bright colors of Dilution Paint. They're so beautiful and vibrant and I just want to use them. I want to make prints with them. So I decided to just go ahead and do it. And what I discovered was that the additional water that comes from the vegetables and fruit actually helped me print with the dilutions because I did get juice <laughs> from some of the, the things that I tried. My next thing was to try some chilies. Of course, you know, where I live in the, in the, United States Southwest chilies are something that are everywhere and I started with a, um, a salsa mix which would be red onion and chilies and the bigger one is an Anaheim chili and then I also have a jalapeno and a um, serrano chili that are graduatingly smaller and I just split them down the half the middle and I left the seeds in because I wanted I wanted to have them in the print, but then of course the seeds got all over my plate. So I had to flick them off. You can see them there because that's going to cause uh, some trouble with my brayering. And, you know, we get debris from different things that we print with. This does happen, little crumbles of paint, you know, dried paint and stuff like that. But I thought it would be fun to have the seeds showing up inside, although they really don't show that much. So I'm still working on the backsides of a few of my pages for my gel print journal that I plan to make. It's I'm probably going to have to make two at this point because I have so many pages that are double-sided now that it's, they're probably not all, all going to fit in one book, maybe one very large book. So these just make interesting shapes and patterns that you wouldn't get from any other thing that you printed with. Um, on my 6x6 there I had put some excess of the green paint and then when I decided to print with the, the chilies again they had some of the red paint on them and so that kind of makes an interesting two color print. We'll see what it's like when it comes out. But um, The dilution paint is a little bit thicker on the plate and of course, like I said, in my climate, it dries extremely quickly, so I don't get the printing all the way through it to the plate sometimes because it gets dried too fast before I can get the thing that I'm printing with all the way through. So I like that one. I thought that one was fun. I like the one with the citrus and the red and orange together. I'm also getting some ghost prints because of the properties of the dilutions paint. So you guys need to just experiment in your in your climate and figure out what kind of paint works best for you. What what dries quickly enough that you don't get frustrated with pulling up, you know, a dried print, but 
also stays wet along long enough that you can use it um, to make some interesting patterns. It just seems to be seems to make a difference. <clears throat> so there's this celery thing that I was talking about. It, it looks like roses when you get done printing with it. Here I'm blotting up some of that uh, grapefruit juice <laughs> that got all over the place. And even the celery has juice. The celery comes out with juice too. I didn't quite realize that celery was as wet on the inside of it as it is. The peppers didn't have as much juice as the other things. So when you look at this print that I've just, well not the print, but where I've just rolled over, <clears throat> you can see the areas that were wet shining through, like where the juice was. Um, I'm not willing to wait for that to dry. I'm too impatient. So I'm just going to live with it. But it makes a clearer print if it was completely dry before I put that, that second layer of paint on there. Let's see how much paint is left. I can get easily get a second print out of that. And maybe even a third. Because it's just, it's thicker. It goes on as in a thicker layer than some of the other paints that I use frequently. I really like these prints though. They kind of remind me of summer or something, all those citrus on there. <laughs> There's the one with the celery. When I buy a bunch of celery, I cut it off that bottom section and then I cut the, uh, the stalks into a couple sections and I put them in water, a little bit of salted water in my refrigerator because it keeps them nicer. So that's how come I have just a hub of the end of the celery. And <clears throat> this time I'm putting, I'm using my six by six as kind of an ink pad to stamp the shape onto my 12 by 12. And doesn't it really kind of look like roses? I think it does. It's an interesting pattern. <laughs> and it's what it inspired this entire video. I also would have liked to have had a pomegranate. I think that that would have been a really fun print. Um, but they're expensive at this time of year here where I live, if there even is any. So I don't have a pomegranate. Also an artichoke would be interesting. And maybe a dragon fruit, because I think they have an interesting inside of them. A kiwi might be interesting. You know, there's all kinds of options. Whatever you have would probably make a fun print. I like that one. It almost looks like a piece of brocade fabric or wallpaper. So with the six by six cleanups, um, I'm doing them on a piece of 12 by 12 deli paper so that I don't waste paper. So I can get basically four of them onto a piece of that deli paper. And this is the quick wrap brand, which is not waxy at all. So I recommend it. I'll put links in the description box below where you can purchase the things that I have used. And if you do use my links that get, if, on Amazon, that gives me a few um, cents when you buy something from Amazon using my links. So I'm always appreciative of that. Here's some strawberries. The strawberries were two baskets for $5. So I had some strawberries in the refrigerator. They almost make a heart shape. And I wanted those little uh, tops to show as well. The, the stems or whatever they are, the leaves. They didn't really want to print though. So I end up doing something about that. But the paint is getting dry already. And I've put Liquitex Basics on the top and then some dilutions on the bottom and the properties of the paint, you can tell the difference just immediately. I can use this um, carving tool to make marks to try to like add that little leafy area at the top of the strawberry and it will come off where the Liquitex Basic is, but the 
the dilutions at the bottom are already dry and I can't even get a, to make a mark with uh, with the carving tool at all so they're just different different paint so if some of you are having frustrations about your gel printing and I know some of you are because you've been following along the series you just need to keep all those things in mind and continue to experiment don't don't get mad and throw the gel plate in the trash because you can't get the results that I get right away and it, it's going to be because of the types of paint you use and the climate that you're in as to what kind of results you ultimately come up with and you'll figure it out you just have to keep trying this one you can see the area where where I put the deli paper down and it wrinkled and then you get those kind of lightning lines looks like lightning through the middle of the print that frequently happens with deli paper it goes down smooth but then it wrinkles I don't know why I guess it starts to absorb some <clears throat> moisture from the paint but I don't care I like the look of it so it doesn't matter to me so here's some broccoli and I just took the florette and like kind of cut a flat section off the top and then I did the same thing with some cauliflower and then I have a little piece <clears throat> of celery that's just the end of the celery that makes kind of like a an arched eyebrow shape just having fun As I was doing it, this, I thought back to the days when I was in grade school and I remember making stamps out of potatoes. And I don't know if, if that's just something that was unique to my, my school childhood. I think it was around Christmas time and we made, we took like big rolls of brown butcher paper and made wrapping paper for the gifts that we made for our parents at school and I don't think that we were allowed to cut the potatoes ourselves I think that the teacher did that but cut the potato in half and then cut a shape out of it like a star or um, something like that and make like a little stamp out of it and I thought of that as I was doing this and that I didn't go get any potatoes because I didn't think we had any potatoes and I wanted to get this video completed but I do remember doing that I think we used tempera paint which um, is a lot less expensive than acrylic it's kind of like a gouache a very chalky paint that's I think water soluble until it's dry I think I got three prints out of the broccoli and cauliflower on one of them I used shimmery green paint which is the PBO Dyna iridescent paint and that's a pretty very pretty print and then this last one I'm using this craft colored deli paper to pick up the last little bits of that green I saw the craft colored deli paper on Amazon and I thought huh I want to try that I bet that would be interesting I think those pieces will make an interesting uh, the par top part of a tree in a collage you know the foliage part of a tree when it's got fully leaved I think those would make a great paper for that for a collage paper painting tear it up make it into the tree foliage so then I'm doing the same thing that I did with with uh, the broccoli I mean the celery stem putting paint on my 6x6 and using it as a sort of ink pad to stamp with this time with my citrus fruit and I used pure sunshine which is a, a yellowish orangish color and then uh, this tangerine dream which I thought was so appropriate considering I was using a tangerine <laughs> Got a lot of juice on my 6x6 when I did that. It smelled good. 
So then I'm picking this up with some titanium white. And it's not completely dry. You can tell because the the colored paint is blending into the white and make kind of a, making kind of a peach color. But I'm not patient enough to wait. So I'm fine with that. That's a fun one. I like that. So I hope you guys uh, go to your refrigerator and pick out some stuff to print with. I'd like to see what you've made. So if you do that, just um, if you po paste, post it on Facebook or something, you can tag me, Chelsea C-E-E -E on Facebook. Or email me at my email address to show me what you've made with your fruits and veggies, or you can uh, tag me on Instagram at Paper Octio Studio. So now I've got the peppers back out again, and this time I'm using the Coffee Grounds colored dilution paint to make my shapes onto my 12 by 12 using the 6 by 6 as a ink pad type of a situation. I think I even throw in some celery. Yep, some little bits of celery on that one. I wouldn't actually put celery in my um, salsa, but you know. What I should have done was I should have um, made this one have red and green and white for the pickup so that it would be like a Mexican salsa <laughs> print. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> I was thinking of the color of habanero, which is kind of an orangey red, orangey yellowy reddy color when I picked the pickup paint. I know a lot of people have told me that that uh, they've been enjoying this gel print series, so I'm continuing on even though I've pretty much completed all the prompts from Bridget Coopson, I have a lot of my own ideas to do. So I'll be throwing in some more videos here and there. And this one's going to end up having a ghost print because it got too dry on the plate and wouldn't all pick up onto my print. I don't get a lot of ghost prints because things dry out too much. But with the delusions, they seem to be leaving a lot of paint on the plate. I know uh, Dilusions came out with some new pastel colors and I'm tempted to purchase them. I haven't purchased them yet, but <laughs> I kind of want to. Even though I'm, I'm really in love with the super bright ones, I also think those pastels would be fun to play with. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment so I know you were here, subscribe and turn on your notifications if you haven't already, and of course if you know someone who would like to gel print with their food, <laughs> then share it with them or pin it on Pinterest. Thanks. Bye-bye.